So today I want to discuss a few things with you. One has to do with writing clean code and the other is uh, Canvas. Um, so we'll talk about Canvas a little later. Let's begin with writing clean code. What do I mean by writing clean code? It's you writing code that is easy to read, that is easy to understand. Why, can anyone tell me, why is it important for you to write code that you can understand? Yes. Exactly. You are often going to be working in a team, right? So other engineers might want to read and try to understand your code. So it makes sense that you write code that is easy to understand. Very good. Another reason. For debugging later on if you want. You said the same thing slightly differently. Absolutely. You yourselves read your own code all the time. When you're debugging, when you're changing things, when you're adding features, right? When you're fixing bugs, you're always reading your own code. So it makes sense to help yourselves, right? If you name your variables something like A, B, C, and D, it's going to be very difficult in the future to try to make sense of what A, B, C, and D are. So having useful variable names, doing proper formatting, all of these things will help you write better code. You, I'm not even talking about other people. Um, so let's begin with that. So what are some things that you can do to write cleaner code? Out of curiosity, does anyone know what this function does? It, it returns A, yes, that's correct. That's, what does it actually do? What is its function? Yeah, it's the bubble sort. Yeah, it's the bubble sort algorithm. It's, ac it's actually the function that I posted, I think, for number four for the quiz as the answer, or one of the many possible answers for number four. Um, right off the bat, there are problems with what you're seeing, right? What's one thing we can do to make this code cleaner? Name the variables more obvious. Yeah. So for example, right off the bat, you can see that the name of the function is v. That tells you nothing about what the function does. What would be a better name for v? Yeah, sort or maybe bubble sort. So here's a good question though. Okay. Suppose I were to give you, I'm, I'm someone who wrote a library, and I say my library has a sort function. If I call it bubble sort, right, you are going to assume that not only is it sorting, but it's using bubble sort, right? What if later I realize, you know what, bubble sort is not the best sorting algorithm, and I decide to change the implementation, that is to say I, tried to, I changed the code inside the function. The fact that I, I, I called it bubble sort is a problem because it's no longer using bubble sort, right? So that's actually an important point. In your naming conventions, don't give away your implementation. The fact that you used bubble sort to implement sort should have nothing to do with the name of the function. Call it sort. That way you can change the implementation without affecting the name. Make sense? Okay, good. What else can I do here? Exactly. So if you notice, everything is kind of on one line. The problem here is now it's difficult trying to understand scope. When everything is on one line, how do you resolve scope? It makes it much more difficult. When you tap things in that are inside of the correct block, it's easier to understand what belongs to what. Okay. So let's have a look at something that looks a little bit better. Ah, very nice. Yeah, exactly. So, so na changing variable names everywhere is one thing I did, right? I changed v to sort, so you know the function does sort. It takes an array and an ascend flag. If the ascend is true, it, it sorts in ascending order. If it's false, it sorts it in descending order. Um, some of the variable names are clear, and also you can see that the formatting here shows what belongs to what block. Right? Understanding this is actually really, really important. One of the things that when you apply for a job and they want to see what code you wrote in the past, one of the basic things that they look at is code formatting. Did you clearly format your code? Is your code easy to read? The fact that you've done lots of programming 
but your code looks like garbage and no one can understand it, right away shows that you're not a good programmer. Okay? So one of the things that people who interview you in the future, who are, you know, when you go for jobs, one of the things they're going to look for when they look at your code is not only does it work, but is it easy to understand? Is it clean? Because they want people, their engineers, to write clean code. This is really important. The quality of the code matters just as much as its correctness. Because if you write code that works, but no one can understand it, that code is dead. That means they can never change it because no one can understand it, right? So that's a problem. So you want to always write clean code that is easy to read, easy to understand, easy to change. The other thing is when you write clean code, you make fewer mistakes. Think of, think of mathematics, right? Imagine you tried to solve an equation, but you just using pencil and paper, but you weren't clear about where, what number goes under what other. You guys know what I'm talking about? When you do math equations, you're very clear about what goes under what, because if you shift things around, you make mistakes. It's the same thing here, okay? You want to stick to these conventions. Questions so far? Does everyone kind of understand how we went from here? Does anyone not? So if I were to theoretically give you a quiz where I gave you code that was could you then rewrite that code in a clean way underneath and get 100%? Jan, okay, let's try it. No, not, not now, don't worry. Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay, very good. So we talked about code formatting, which is quite important. Now let's get back to JavaScript and building awesome things. So up until now in the browser, we've talked about the DOM, which is this HTML tree that allows you to add various elements like p tags and input boxes, right? Divs, spans, whatever, all these things that some of you, I hope, now understand. Another element that we can add to the HTML tree is called canvas, okay? A canvas, you can think of canvas as a piece of paper. You can then draw on this piece of paper, okay? <laughs> Very simple. What does it actually look like? So let's have an example. So notice here I have a tag called canvas. Can everyone read? Is this okay, the zoom? Okay. So I have a tag called canvas. Here it is. It has an ID. We can give any element an ID, as you recall. It has a width and a height. This gives that canvas a size. Remember, a canvas you can think of as a piece of paper that sits in the browser. Now we want to draw on this canvas, right? Well, so the first thing we have to do in our code is reference canvas. And we can do this either using jQuery by doing, you know, jQuery dollar, you know, that number sign canvas, the ID, or we can do get element by ID and then that gives us back the canvas element. With me so far? Okay, so this now references this element here. This is now that. Is that clear? Okay, now we want to draw on the canvas. So the canvas is our paper. We need a pen in order to draw on it. But there's a question. Do we want to draw things in two dimensions or do we want to draw things in three dimensions? Depending on which we want, we get different set of functions. In other words, if we want to draw two-dimensional shapes on the paper, we need two-dimensional functions. That is to say functions that just need x and y. If we want to do three-dimensional shapes, we need different functions that take x, y, and z. Make sense? Okay, so specifically for this class, we're only going to cover two dimensions. So we're going to do canvas.getContext2D. And that gives us back this context object. Context is just an object. An object that has attached to it functions that in this case allow you to do 2D rendering. Okay so far? Okay. So one function that this context has is called fill rect. What do you suppose fill rect does? 
it draws a rectangle. And the fact that there's a fill there maybe implies that you can somehow fill in the rectangle, right? OK, so think of it this way. Suppose I gave you a piece of paper. I want to draw a rectangle. I have a piece of paper. I tell you, on this piece of paper, draw me a rectangle. What's some information you need from me in order to draw a rectangle? OK, so one thing you might need is position. OK, where should I draw the rectangle, right? So you need coordinates, like x, y coordinates, maybe. So let's say I tell you I want to draw the rectangle here. The next thing is how big? What's the width? What's the height, right? OK, so I tell you I want the width to be whatever wide and whatever high. OK, the next thing you might want to say, if I say fill this rectangle, is with what color? OK, you want me to fill a rectangle, fine. What color do you want me to fill the rectangle with, right? So it makes sense that I tell you a color. And let's say I tell you, because I only have a black pen, I say black. And so you go and go, OK. <coughs> Ta-da! And you've done what I've asked you to, which is you filled a rectangle. Clear? Now let's imagine that in code. Fill style tells you the color to fill. If I wanted to fill black, here I would write B L A C. Okay. Ta da! Okay? So fill style tells you the color to fill it in. Next, we call a function called fill rect. It implies fill in a rectangle. But we don't know where, right? So it turns out that these four numbers mean this is the x, this is the y, this is the width, this is the height. Let me prove it to you. Let me make the width bigger. But um, agreed that that's the width. Let me make the height bigger. But um. OK, now you might be wondering to yourself, what about the 1010? OK, the 1010 are x and y. But it's a little different from what you're used to. So in mathematics, you have a system like this, where x and y begins here and grows upward, right? The bigger x goes this way, and bigger y goes that way. In this system, it's a little bit different. Y grows downward. OK? So you start off here. And if you want to do an x of 10, you go 10 this way, 10 pixels this way. Let's say that's 10. And then if you do 10 of y, you go down 10. Make sense? So as the, as the y gets bigger, the box actually goes down, not up. Watch. Let me make this 10 a 20. You see? Let me make it a 30. See? It keeps going down. You see that? But x, if I make that 30, it goes right. Does that make sense? It's very simple. So x and y grows down in this direction. Clear? Width and height is as you expect. Yes? Will the other box moving to make x even bigger? Will the, no. Well, you'll see why in one moment. Now, just like we can draw a box that we fill in, we might want to draw a box that we don't fill in where I just want the perimeter of the box to have a line. OK? For that, I use a stroke rect. OK? So we have two, two ways of drawing a rectangle. Either one where we care about putting the color inside, or the one where we only care about putting the color in the perimeter. What gives you more particular set? You can do fill rect and then set the, the thing as well. It works together. 
You were saying something. Yeah. What if we make fuel start and stop right? Or stop start and stop right? Fuel st say that one more time. Oh, you mean if I just change the order? Uh, yeah. Just tell me what to do. Like that? This? Okay. Why is it black? Because this is stroke, and this fill rect doesn't draw stroke. So your original question, you can draw a, a fill rect and then draw a, a, a stroke on top of each other, and you can get this and that. The reason why it has no effect is because this does not have a stroke. It only has a fill. Why it's red? Default color. Default color, exactly. But if I change the default color to, oh wait, I did say black. Hang on, let me change that to red. There you go. Is that part clear? Let me refresh. So stroke rect and fill rect work almost exactly the same way, except that one only draws the, the stroke, which is the perimeter, and the other one only draws the fill, which is the stuff inside. Yes. Yeah, I think it's line width. Hang on. Uh, yeah. OK, so you might be wondering, how did I know that? Right? Uh, well, I, did, I knew it because I've done this before. But how will you know that? It's very easy. Yeah, you Google 2D context for Canvas. And it will tell you every function that it has and all the various options that every function has. Make sense? Questions so far? Yes. Yeah, we're about to get there. We're going to draw lots of things now. Yeah. So in this example, right, we created two things, a filled rectangle and a stroked rectangle, right? Are there any questions up until this point? So we also can draw like green frame and inside the red. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, we can do. So this was ten. Like that. Uh, but those are two different objects. They are just. They're not objects. So, okay. So one thing that you have to understand with Canvas is it's just pixels. There aren't objects. It's not like HTML where you can add a click event handler to an object. Okay, but there are still different things. They are just overlaid. It's just things. It, it goes through everything and then just draws pixels, which is why it's very fast, by the way. Yes? Huh? Spassi, spa wait, say that one more time. <laughs> uh huh? So the, okay, so the number of pixels depends on your resolution on your screen. So remember that. Second, I'm not really, I'm trying to understand what you mean. So. If I were to shift it, and then I can shift it back to 10. Uh, sorry, I, mi I misunderstood your point. When you refresh the page, the uh, uh, field strike, field rack, yeah. we have 10 and 10. Yes. But in the short rack, we have 110. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. Okay, 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 watch. I see what you're saying. Okay, look. 
10, 10, so from here you have 10, and then 50 means up here, here you have 60, right? So that means this here is 40. You understand why? Because it sums up to 100, which is the x for this one. Yes? Cool. Uh, other, qu yes? Yeah. Yes. Stroke means just the border. Fill means fill. Give what names? Th think about your question, then ask it again. Give what variable names? No, okay, look, guys, this is what I keep, I'm telling you. It's not like HTML where you make an element and then you can refer to that element using a variable. You're just saying draw something on the screen. I draw something on the screen. There's no way for you to refer to what I drew. It's just pixels. There is no variable. Put what though? It doesn't return a reference to anything. You can put what inside the function? So the problem is code. Sure, you can put code inside of code, yeah. yeah. So the problem is imagine that we have created an image, like yeah. this much of a button, we just want to like move it 30 pixels to Right, so we'll look at an ex You'll see, you'll see, what I, you'll see how to do that. So you have data separately and you render that data on the screen. You'll, you'll see in one moment. Yes? Yes, you can do a draw text, I think, is, is, the, is the function, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Verchina. Stroke style, Ashkatuma stroke vira. So the verchin stroke style, Ashkati verchin stroke vira. Watch. Let me do another one of these. Let me have this be at 150 and have this be blue. So here, this green applied to this one, this blue applied to this one. Think of it this way. Stroke style tells you what pen to use, and then the call tells you to draw using that pen. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Change places of x and y? You can put any number into x and any number into y. What do you mean by change places? You mean, you mean bring to front? Yes, that order matters, yes. Because, el vons. Wait, wait, go ahead. Wait, wait, one second, one second. Yes, we're about to get there. If you guys will stop asking questions, go. Why is it not blue? Why is it? It is blue. Is it blue? <laughs> okay, it's a bad. Let me do light. Ugh, it's blue. Okay, just it's not rendering well with the thing. Okay, can we can we keep going, or do you have other random questions you want to ask me? <sighs> okay. So in this example. Okay, so in this example, I've created an object. This is a regular object that has some information in it. The information that I'm storing is x, y, width, height, and color. This has nothing to do with canvas. It's just a regular object with some data in it. We understand what this is, right? Okay, and I happen to put this object into a variable I called point. Good? Okay. Then what I do is I have a draw function, which when I call, will draw this point on the screen. Got it? Okay. Now we can put them in the random way, yeah? Put one in the random way. 
Well, hang on, no. Because when you call fill rec, the first argument has to be whatever x is going to be. Oh, in point. Yeah, in point, you can do whatever. Well, point is just an object with key value pairs. Name, value, name, value, name, value. I can then refer to it by the name. Oh, we also can change the name, yeah? Then we point that. Yes. X can be pogos, and as long as you have pogos here, you're OK. Yeah. So look what I'm doing here. When I call draw, Instead of just hard coding some value, I'm reading the value from my object. So here I'm saying point color, point x, point y, point width, and then later point height. Is this clear? Yeah, you can, yeah, I could have just done this. Get rid of that and get rid of that. Are there questions regarding what I did here? This is clear? OK. Well, in the same way, if that's clear, I can make an array of points. So here I have an array. Each, I have a bunch of points. Each one has an x, y, width, height, blah, blah, and a bunch of colors. And I have a draw function that I call. And what the draw function does is it iterates over all the points. And for each point, draws a rectangle. Clear? OK. So the output of that is that. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that got you riled up. OK, so have a look at the data. OK, so we're creating at 0 and y50, we're doing 50 by 50, and the color we're filling it in is red. We're then shifting over 50, doing another 50 by 50, and doing blue, shifting over another 50, that becomes 100, doing another 50 by 50, and doing orange. So I make three boxes, red, blue, and orange. Voila. OK, now. Did you guys kind of understand how this code worked? Up. <laughs> Hands up if you understood how this worked. Very nice. OK, if you understood how it worked, our flag is sideways. Change it. Okay, hang on. Okay, should I, do I have to change the first one? How do I change this one? What about this one? Very nice. OK, so one of the thing that I'm trying to show you here is something that is actually fundamental to building applications, which is that you have data, and you want to visualize that data. OK? In this case, our data is these points. It's just information. And then we have a function that then draws that information on the screen. Where have you seen that before, where you get some information, and then you draw the information on the screen? Huh? Inside, our list. Inside your to-do list, right? You got information from the server, which, in, which was the to-do list information, and then you had a loop where you were adding elements to the screen, thereby drawing the to-do list in the browser, right? This is another example of taking data and then having a function that turns that data into a visualization. Clear? Any questions so far? Yes. Sorry? Points, yes, it's an array. OK, so it's an array of objects. This array has three objects in it, right? Each object contains an x, y, width, height, and a color. Yes? 
okay. So what we do is we iterate over every object, and each object we say, what is your x? What is your y? What, what is your color? And we draw it. Good? Questions? Other questions? Clear? Let's keep going. So let's... Whoa. 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 All right, all right, settle down. All right, so the first part is more or less the same. We get a reference to the canvas, a reference to the context object, and we have a list. But we have this extra variable called xd. With me? We have an extra variable called xd. We'll get to that in a moment. We have a draw function, which we've seen before. And what it does, don't worry about what this line does for now. It iterates over all the points and draws them. This we've seen already. But have a look at this here. After drawing every point, every time it draws a point, it changes the x for that point by whatever xd is, which is 1. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Good? So you draw it, you move it by 1. You draw it, you move it by 1. You draw it, you move it by 1. With me? Yes. With me so far. So if I were to just call this function, it would draw all the boxes, change all the x's to one, plus 1, and stop. Right? So we should probably call it again so it draws it in a new place, moves it, and then draw it again, moves it, draws it again, Why moves it. What? Sorry? Why did it save the last one? What do you mean? Yes. Wait, wait. You have a very so you have three objects. Every one has an x, right? All we're doing is we're changing its x by adding a one on every one. It's the same object, but now the x is one more than the pre previous time, right? Ah, we're changing it. Look. Okay. It's u three. I draw you, and I tell you your age, you're now one year older than you were. You're now one year older than you were, you're now one year older than you were. Next time I come, all of you are one year older, right? So I draw you, you're going to be a little taller. I then add one more year to all of you, go away, come back, draw you again. Add one more year, you're now taller. Come back, and in this way you keep growing in size, right? Okay, you're changing us. Yes, I'm cha it's a modification, yeah, I'm changing X, absolutely. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, let's keep going. So what we need is some way to loop. Right? Yes? Okay. So here's how we do that. We have this animate function down here. We call it. It comes here. It calls draw, which draws everything one time. In fact, if we don't do this, it's just going to draw everything one time. So you drew it and done. Good. Yes? Okay. But then what we do is we call this window.setTimeout. What is window? Oh, don't worry about that for now. Jesus Christ. Okay. What is window? What is it? It's an object. Just a way of with the DOM? So if you do window.document, yeah. Yeah, it's the main thing. It gives you all the global functions that JavaScript gives you, one of which is set timeout. In fact, you could just do this. Wait. Okay. There is a function that JavaScript provides for you. It's a global function 
called set timeout. See that? Set timeout. And it takes two arguments. What arguments does it take? What do you think? Yeah. So it takes a function that it will call, and it takes time in milliseconds. So what this is saying is wait for 10 milliseconds, then call this function. I'll say it again. It, you give it a function and time, it waits for this long, and then calls that function. Yes? Did, clear? OK. So we call animate, it draws, waits, calls animate again, draws, waits, calls animate, draws, waits. This is an example of a recursive function. It's an infinite recursive function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Is that clear? Yes. Yeah, we could have put a termination case. Yes, you're right. Some condition that if it broke, it would stop. That's what you're saying? Right, here it goes forever. Yes, yes. Is this clear? Okay, if this is clear, how can I make this animation? Hang on. That animation, how can I make it slower? Decrease the step, I can also increase the time. I can also, uh, I can do dot one, for example. Because then the x will be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Also. What is the meaning of? 10. This, milliseconds. One one thousandth of a second. So one thousand of these is one second. So if I wanted to move, look, if I wanted to move 10 every second. One Mississippi, two. This is now moving 10 every second. Got it? Okay. So let's instead move it every. 10 milliseconds, but only one. And we get with that. Now here, let me ask you a question. Here's what's happening. I'll say, all right, I'll draw it here. We have our canvas. You tell me to draw a box. I draw a box. You move the x and y and draw the box again. I'll draw it here. You move the x and y and draw it again. I draw it here. You move it and draw it again. I draw it here. Notice what's happened? Right. It makes sense that you take an eraser. If you want an animation, what you have to do is after you draw the first one, before you draw the second, you have to erase the previous and then draw it in the new place. Erase the previous, draw it in the new place. And keep doing this so that it actually moves and that doesn't just leave us this weird thing. Awesome. I had right in a hand, let's see. So, right. So my previous creation is above that. Ah, now I, sorry. Okay, now I understand. So there's this other thing called clear rect. Clear rect means like taking an eraser and. Uh, 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 uh. And it takes the same arguments as a rectangle. The width and height, which in this case is zero, right? So here, and the width, the entire width and the, the entire height of the canvas. So I'm <laughs> And then I loop over and I draw everything. And then next time, <laughs> and draw everything. Um, And you get that. There, there's a function called clear rect. Clear rect. 
clear rect means draw like a clearing rectangle in this area and you give it the x and y and width and height and it will clear that much area. Did I answer, who was it that I just asked? Did I answer your question? Exactly, so for optimizational reasons to be faster, if you don't have to clear the whole thing, don't clear the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, if you only drew a block here, you, you can just dr clear this part and not clear the entire thing. Yeah, and it's, fa it's better. Yeah, don't think of it as delete. Literally think of it like a piece of paper. It would just keep going. It would go off canvas and just keep going. Yeah. Very good. That's the next thing we're going to do. If my computer ever turns on. Okay, so I'll tell you. Look, 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 look. So we kept adding one, right? And as we add one, yes. so look, as we add one, it will obviously go that way, right? What do I have to add for it to go back? Yeah, you could do things like that. But what's the, the very basic thing? I'm adding one, so it's moving one. What do I have to add for it to go that way? Ta -da! So instead of adding a 1, let me add a variable called xd, which has a 1 in it. So far, nothing has changed, right? But watch this. What does that do? jQuery, come on. What does the? Ah. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go one at a time. What does just that much do? It selects a canvas. What does that do? It registers an event listener. What does that do? Yeah, I could have done click, but mouse down. Yeah, when the mouse goes... Click is... Yeah. So mouse down, that's that. When that happens, I'm going to get an event. So every time the mouse goes, I'm going to multiply my xd by negative 1. If it was 1 before and I multiply by negative 1, I get? If it's now minus 1 and I do that, I get? Exactly. So I can flip by just go. It's a variable. Look. It's just a variable with a 1 in it. This xd here, keeps, I keep adding xd, which is 1. Here, I flip at the value of xd. This is one of the awesome things about variables, right? Is you can change them. You can't change a value, but you can change a variable. Okay, so let's see if this actually works. Let me start. Let me click, click. Click, click, click. Everyone get it? OK, the other thing that I get, by the way, from this event is the coordinates. Where I clicked. Yeah, hit Tari. Now it's just going to keep going. I get this. I get e.clientx and e.clienty. That tells me where I clicked. Question for you. For every object, I know it's x, I know it's y, I know it's width, I know it's height. How do I know if this clicked on, say, orange? There are three boxes here. I want to know when I click on the orange one, like this. How can I know that? Right, so the orange is the third value inside of our array, right? So we can say if that array index of 2 
right? Index of 2 means the third value. Dot x is less than is less than the client x, but client x is is it's, if it's between basically x and x plus width. And if and the y, right? As long as it's between the y and the y plus height, then you know they were they clicked inside of the box. Yes? What's a game we can build using that? Try to catch Okay, instead of draw instead of drawing boxes, you can draw pictures of tanks. And when you click on a tank, you're shooting a tank. And when you shoot a tank, you can change you can stop the tank and change it to like a burning tank. And you got yourself that stupid game that people play where they shoot tanks. Uh, ta isn't it called tanks? Uh, whatever. I keep getting these ads inviting me to like shoot a tank. And and when you move the mouse, you The point is this is it. We spent what? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you guys know how to write a game with tanks. So it's our work. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Another bad idea. <laughs> write a game with canvas. I love it. And then you can expand that canvas to your project. I see it now. I see it now. All right, good. Good, 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 good. All right. Okay, so, yes. Yeah, you can do, instead of uh, fill rect, you can do draw image, I think. Just look it up. Just Google, just Google, and it'll tell you. Yeah, you just give it the, like the, you create an image object, and you give it as an argument, and it draws it on the page. And you give it the height and the location. It's really simple. And if you need help, come to office hours. Cool, right? Yeah. Oh, easy. So you have your entire screen, right? Your browser window. You don't want the coordinate relative to the entire window. You only want your coordinate relative to the canvas itself. Yes? So client X will give you relative to canvas. There are additional coordinates there that will give you the relative to the entire thing. But you don't need that here. Did I answer your question? You understood my, question, my answer? OK. So client X is the coordinate inside of Canvas. That's all you have to know. Yeah? Uh, other questions? Say that one more time. Yes. No. Oh, you mean when I'm drawing inside? OK, so here's what happens. Think of your canvas as a piece of paper. I give, look. Guys, look. I make a canvas that's of a width of, say, 500 pixels. Right? If I tell the browser, draw me a rectangle at x coordinate of 3,000, that's like here, it'll just ignore it. Right? So if I keep drawing something, drawing, 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 and it becomes here, it just doesn't even draw it. Askasar? Other questions? Yeah. This part or the data? The, you want the data? No, it's the height that you give it. In this case, I gave it 500. Ha, huh, the same rules as if you put a, any el other element. <laughs> yeah, you can specify, you can make position absolute and set x, y anywhere you want. It's the, sa the same rules for CSS and any other HTML apply to Canvas. Same rules. Other questions? Okay, so if you think about this, this is pretty cool. So you, you have data, you can draw the data on the screen, you can manipulate the data and keep drawing it, 
thereby getting an animation, the data could be coming from the server. So if you had some way of sending that data to different clients and also receiving data from clients, you can now write a distributed game where I shoot a tank and your tank dies, you shoot a tank, my tank dies. Go. The difference between SVG and Canvas? No, no, Canvas, okay. So just very quickly, if, if you don't know what SVG is, shut off your brain. SVG is a different standard than Canvas. SVG, every, everything you draw is an element. So you still have a tree. With Canvas, you only have one element. The rest is just pixels. The advantage, I'll tell you, the advantage and disadvantage. Advantage of SVG is you have elements that you can add event listeners to, and you can select them, and you can write. The disadvantage is it's slower, because it requires this big tree, this DOM. DOM is slow. With pixels, it's very fast. So you can do really complicated animations. So you have what? A format? No, it's just pixels. Just pixels. Now there are libraries that will keep track of where the pixels are and give you objects. When you modify the object, it updates the pixel. But that's objects. Uh, sorry, that's libraries. Yeah, but these libraries are optimized for, for performance. The, remember this, the tree is, is what slows things down, the DOM. As long as you're not modifying the DOM, JavaScript is fast, actually. The tree is slow. Anyway. OK, you can turn on your brains again. Come back. Um, so this is pretty cool. If you combine the to-do list with Canvas, you can actually build some really, really cool stuff. So that's nice. More questions about this, or should we do a review? Yeah. With our knowledge, it's like from the server and the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you just need to add socket IO, and the rest you know. Yeah. Uh, good, we're done, keep going. Okay. All right. How do I make a variable? Hi, Ej. How do I make a variable? What's the difference between these two? That's okay. That's not okay. Got it? Good. Uh, how do I print the addition of A plus B? Okay, good. How do I make a function? What is funk? I want my function to take two arguments. Go. I want my function to return their sum. I want to print the addition of 5 and 10 using my funk. Rem don't get confused. This, it checks to see, do I have an A? Yes, I do. Here, done. I don't keep going up. If I did this, then yes, now this A is using this A. But as long as I have a local A, it takes that over this. Got it? Good. What's an example of something I can do with recursion? How about a factorial? Let's write a factorial function. Sorry. OK, what do I do?
Wait, let me. N times. Smaller than what? If n is smaller than. Greater than or equal to what? Two. Two? If n is equal to zero, then it's one, and the other. Sorry, if it's equal to zero, return one, else return factorial. That works too. You're right. If it's one, then you're going to multiply by one anyway, and you quit before the second, the last cycle. Well, you know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. That's why I'm saying that we should write zero. Okay. What if you did uh, less than or equal to one? Less than, less than. Now, if you give it zero, you'll get one for factorial of zero. Whatever. But at least it won't loop forever. Okay, then you have to not do always do n minus one. You have to check to see whether it's greater than or greater than zero or less. Wait, how does how does you guys tell me how does negative factorial work? It doesn't. Oh, good. So then we don't have to worry about it. Okay, not bad. How about, how about, let's print diamonds. But let's do a for loop, not diamonds. Let's do a star with two nested for loops. Sorry, not star. Like that. Let's print a triangle. So if I give it a 3, it prints 3, then 2, then 1, and stop. If I give it 5, it's 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, stop. Four loops, yeah, go. OK, let's change f to stars. Let's give it some amount. OK, go. Okay, so hang on. So right now, if I just did console.log star, I will get. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. There. I, I get 10 stars or 5 stars. Okay, so I got this part done. Now I need to do that part, right? I need this part. So what do I do? What? Let what? J equals N? Or J equals zero. J is less than I. J plus plus. How about this? Does that work? No? OK, let's just see. Let me create a let s be my string. And let's add s plus equals a star to it, and then print it. Whoops. Not what we want. We have to change it. That's right. What do I change?
OK, let's create an object. How do I make an object? How do I make an object? I want to add some information in it, like my name. I want to add, um, no, no. Um, what the hell else do I want to add? Or, oh, I know. Nationality. Yeah. OK. I want to console.log my name. Very nice. I want a university. How do I print AUA? Very nice. Uh, how do I change the name of the university? OK, good. So far, so good. I want an array. How do I make an array? OK, I want to put into this array a bunch of numbers. No. I want to put arrays into this array. You know what? Watch this. What have I, what did I just do? So I have an array of 10 arrays. That is to say, a list of 10 lists. Yes? OK. Now, Oh, sorry, 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 good. Merci. What did I just do? Right, so it's an array inside of which are 10 arrays. Every one of those arrays has 10 objects in it where each object in each of those arrays has a name 0 through 9. OK, what will this give me? Wait. That will give me an array. This will give me a three, uh, dot name. What will that give me? Asma Z. Z is a variable. What's the value of Z? <laughs> you get why? This gives me the fourth array. This gives me the third object in the array. And this gives me the name inside of that object. The fourth object, the fourth ob this is the fourth, right? Because we start from zero. This is the fourth object. The fourth object has a z of three, which is why we get a three. Console.log what? OK, 
Here, let me just show this in the debugger. One second. This is my array. It has 10 arrays in it. Each one has 10 objects in it. Each one has a name with its index as the name. OK, OK. OK. Here's what I want to do. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to say this one thing, take a photo, and you're done. I want to give you guys a quiz. Um, I don't know, probably next week. The quiz is going to be about JavaScript. And the cool part is, is unless you do well on it, it won't count. But if you do well on it, it will replace one of your other poor grades. Oh, I like this. Everyone. So the reason for this is I want you to, if you accidentally like, didn't do well on too many quizzes, we've only had two, if you bid poorly on both of them, this will give you the opportunity to flip one of them and the other one drops anyway. Okay, I'll repeat this one more time. We drop the lowest grade. Of the grades that you have, if you do well on your JavaScript exam, I will replace it with any one of those poor ex grades. So in reality, it's like me dropping two of your lowest grades, yeah. <laughs>